Hey everyone, it's Odessa Sam here at Aquaba Academy. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some tips of um, self-help skills that children in pre-K and kindergarten should know before entering, um, entering school. And I chose those two grades because children in pre-K, that's the grade that they are pretty much learning and getting more independence in preparation for kindergarten. And then children in kindergarten, there are some who have never ever stepped foot inside of a preschool, a daycare, anything. And kindergarten is their first ever school experience. So they will need to know these skills that they did not learn the previous year in pre-K. So in general, for both age groups, um, children should work on putting on their coats, jackets, and sweaters. That is something that they will need to know, um, and especially for pre-K to cut down on their wait time because it's a lot of students in the classroom and you're limited with how many adults are in a room and that just creates a longer wait time if every last child in the room will need assistance to put on the coat, zip the coat, button, snap, whatever um, uh, type of hook you have on that coat. So the next thing I would say, in addition to putting on the coat, learning how to put on their um, their scarves and their mittens or their gloves. Typically, I would recommend mittens for younger children because it takes a long time for them to figure out how to get their fingers in each of the slots on your traditional glove. So I would prefer or recommend that um, you opt for mittens because they only need to get their thumb into that slot and the other four fingers are good to go. Uh, a recommendation for children entering pre-K, um, just being mindful of the type of clothes that they are sent to school in because children in pre-K, they're still going through that po potty training phase. While they may have gone through the potty training phase at home, keep in mind at the age of four because in pre-K, most children are just turning four. So they're prone to still have some accidents. Sometimes they may have accidents um, during nap time. So just be mindful of what you're sending them in. Think, think of things that they can get in and out of easily. Um, so when you're sending them to school, try to avoid sending children into clothes that will hold them up from using the bathroom. For example, overalls. Because of that hook that's on the straps, if the child doesn't know how to unhook it, then they're going to end up having an accident because they just couldn't get out of it in time. Um, something else to consider, belts. Both age group children need to learn how to buckle and un especially unbuckle because when they need to go to the bathroom. Um, and I know these things look cute, but then we have to also be cognizant of um, what can potentially happen to children if they are in outfits that they don't know how to get out of when they have to go to the, the bathroom. Um, for girls in pre-K, uh, be mindful of um, certain types of clothes, like rompers or those jumpsuits. I would try to avoid those. I've taught pre-K for a very long time, so what I'm saying, I'm definitely speaking from experience. In preschool classrooms, they um, there are bathrooms in a preschool classroom, and there there's no door. So there's no door, which means when your daughter goes to the bathroom, your daughter will be completely nude when she takes off her romper. Because generally a romper you have to, you know, unbutton or unzip to take the whole, and it's just one piece and it lands on the floor, undergarment is on the floor and the, the little girl is standing in the bathroom completely nude for everyone to see. Now, if it were a pants, um, she can just pull it down to about mid thigh and for the most part she's discreet enough that no one can you know see too much it isn't too revealing and the next tip is for children entering kindergarten uh, learning how to tie shoelaces uh, that is something that can be um, quite tricky it does take some time but over time with a lot of practice they will be able to um, tie their shoelaces or if it makes things easier then maybe considering shoes that have the Velcro straps. And then in between that, they're still learning how to tie their shoelaces. 
the children in pre-K. I generally like uh, shoes that have the Velcro because it's still teaching them those self-help skills of learning how to put their shoes on on their own and finishing it up by just closing the Velcro as opposed to them trying to struggle to tie laces that they generally don't know how to tie at the beginning of pre-K. So that can be something to keep in mind because um, during pre-K, during a day in pre-K, children have downtime for a nap. So they do have to take their shoes off to lay on the cot and then put it back on. So just always think, especially for pre-K, always think when you're dressing your child for school, is he or she going to be able to get in and out of this on their own if the teacher is not able to assist right away? Because there's a lot of other children in the classroom, as I said before, and there's going to be a lot of wait time and some children just don't do well with waiting for a long time. And it's not that the teacher doesn't want to help, it's just that there are a lot of bodies and everyone has to wait their turn until the teacher makes his or her way around the room. Something else that I would um, recommend doing, and this, does not, this doesn't fall under self-help skills, but I would recommend um, story retelling because it's something that's really important and children do need to build on these skills because ultimately in kindergarten, there's going to be a lot of story retelling and understanding these um, elements that make up stories. So read books to your children, always ask them to retell the story and always use those sequence words so they're getting used to it. It's being embedded into their brain. What happened first in the story? What happened next? then last or in the beginning of the story what happened in the middle of the story what happened at the end of the story so just always use sequence words so that they're understanding that stories are told in a specific order and it's the order of the events that actually happened or something else that you can do um, as you're reading a story just before you get to the end of the story stop and ask your child how can you make a new ending for the story what would be the ending what would you do next in the story and see what they do with creating that um, new story. So that's it for the tips for today. If you found this video useful, go ahead and click the like button. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that way you are notified when I drop new videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.